Hi everybody, um, thank you for being here. Uh, let me just share a bit of, of, um, of uh, what I've uh, done over my um, years in terms of trying to inspire the youth um, on how you're living in a much better world and what you can do to make it even better. So I was an uh, Asia Pacific Ambassador for Singularity University. Singularity University is a think tank in NASA um, Ames Research Park in Silicon Valley. It was set up um, in 2009 by, this, uh, by two people, Peter Demendis and uh, Ray Kutzwell, whom I'll speak about in a short while. So Peter Demendis is most famous for running the X Prize. Um, he basically wanted to go to space when he was a kid, um, but he's not really tall, and NASA you know, would not be able to accept him. So he thought of another way of going to space. How about making it cheap enough that people can actually go to space? So he ran the X Prize and said that anybody who has an idea that can um, essentially send a, space, uh, a, a spacecraft 100 kilometers above sea level, land and fly again within two weeks will win $10 million. He did this without actually raising the money and somebody actually won. Um, so he struggled, and, uh, but then Richard Branson came along and said he would buy the rights to it and now you're going to have Space Galactic, um, Virgin Space Galactic, I think fly probably at the end of the year. And it has brought down the cost of sending somebody to space from, 200, uh, from $20 million through NASA via the shuttle program to $200,000. So he wrote a couple of books, one is called Bowl, the other is called Abundance, the future is better than you think. So due to exponential technology, technology that's moving so fast, it's driving down the price of a lot of things and because we're living now in a world of abundance, not scarcity. Um, so the world is much better than you think. We have uh, removed poverty, I think 80% of uh, uh, poverty has gone from 80% down to less than 14% now worldwide. So the other person is um, Ray Kurzweil. Uh, which, which where Singularity got its name from, he wrote a book called The Singularity is Near. He says that technology is moving so fast, by 2029, the machines will be faster than uh, the human brain, so you could download the entire human brain to a machine and merge with it and live forever if you wanted to. Um, and, you know, when I was teaching AI back at Bond University, I used to tell my students, um, you know, you, you can, this is like 20 years ago, uh, you know, you could one day be able to upload you know, a uh, day that you feel good, if you feel bad, you can just basically uh, make, uh, you know, load it back into your brain and you have a great day, just don't forget the backup. Anyway, um, Ray wrote a number of books, Singularity is Near is one of them, he has actually has a movie about it too. The other book that he wrote is Transcend, for those of you who are interested in living forever. He bas you know, basically at Singularity we learned that um, we have now understand the aging process and the reason why we age is because um, in a world of scarcity, when you have your offspring, you have your kids, it's better that you die off so that your kids can have the resources. But today we live in a world of abundance, but our body don't know that. It still switch on the genes that will make you age. So we understand now the mechanism of aging, and we understand the solutions that we need to achieve, except it, it will take us about 25 to 35 years for each of those steps. There's seven reasons why you age. Um, and each of those um, technology will take a bit of time. So, if you can live for at least 25 years, you'll be, extend, you'll be able to extend your life for another 25 years, um, unless you get knocked down by a bus or a tramp in the Gold Coast. Um, so have a look at this book. And um, Ray, wrote, um, Ray basically wrote his first AI-generated music program when he was 17 years old. He was very passionate and inspired to try to allow blind people to um, access books in the library. So he invented um, the optical reading machine for the blind. So if you're using Siri today or using a scanner, uh, a lot of the technology came from Ray. And then Stevie Wonder, you guys know Stevie Wonder, right? Stevie Wonder is a blind pop singer. Um, became good friends with Ray because he was very grateful he could now access books in the library. And he asked Ray, could you help me? Could you develop a musical instrument for me to compose music because I'm blind, I can't play some of the instruments. Can you do it on the keyboard? So Ray came up with um, the synthesizer which he sold to the um, Koreans back in 1980, 80, uh, in the 80s, um, which allow you know, um, uh, people to use it. And I was lucky enough, a few days ago, when I was in Korea, uh, the company that bought Ray's company uh, essentially was uh, having an exhibition of the world's largest digital piano, and I got to play on it, so I thought it was pretty cool to share this with you. Um, so let me talk a little bit about exponential steps, exponential technology, what does it all mean? So we, our brain is very in tune in terms of thinking linearly. Um, so if I say you take a step a meter, in 30 steps you would be 30 meters away. 
But if I say you take exponential steps, you double your steps every time you walk, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, in 30 steps, how far do you think you have gone? You would have gone 26 and a half times around the world, a billion meters. And that's how fast technology is moving. And so at Singularity, we try to basically teach people to spot those trends and be prepared for it. So as you can see in this chart, um, that the, um, tech, you know, we have now the computational power of a slightly more than a mouse brain. So by 2025, 2029, we would have the ability to simulate an entire human brain. And by 2050, we'll have the computational power to essentially simulate every single human being's brain in the world. What are you gonna do with all that computational power? And I thought I'll give you a quick snapshot in April 2017, right? We now have about seven and a half billion people on this planet. We have 3.8 billion on the internet. And by 2020, we'll have about 6 billion, right? What does that mean for all of you? It's no better time than now to be an entrepreneur. You know, all your um, potential partners, customers, um, you know, investors are all online. You can access them very easily. Um, so this is a quick snapshot on, on, on uh, the activity and what the internet, how fast it has grown. Another example is, you know, IBM took 46 years to reach a valuation of a billion dollars. Google took eight years, Facebook took five, and uh, Groupon took 18. I think Snapchat is probably even less than that. Um, so as you can see, things are quickening and happening very quickly uh, in terms of um, the impact. So the problem with the exponential curve is that you start with a very small number like 0 0.1, right? When you double it, what do you get? 0 0.2, we're still below one. Then you double it again, what do you get? 0 0.4. So it is very, very, um, deceptive, so people think it doesn't work. Let me give an example, LED lights. 10 years ago, would you even think of putting LED lights in your house? You probably never thought of it. It's too expensive, you know, hard to get hold of. Today, LED lights uh, are basically replacing almost every single uh, other technology in lighting. Um, and if you had thought 10 years ago that you know, LED lights are gonna be cheap, what can you do with it today? Like make clothings and stuff like that. Um, that would be something that you could um, capitalize and commercialize. So you've got to think what's going to happen in the future, not what's happening right now when you're developing your technology and projects. So once you've passed one, in 30 steps, I told you it's a billion, right? So essentially, it moves really fast. And that's when people get, um, you know, uh, it, it, it could create a lot of chaos because of disruption and people are amazed. So what technology is going through this phase right now? 3D printing. Right? 3D printing has been around for, you know, since the 80s, but somebody has a patent for it. And that's what, one of the reasons why it's been held back and technology too hasn't moved on at the time. Um, that those patents expired last year. So now you're going to see a lot of 3D printers coming on the mainstream and not just printing plastic, pl printing sintering metals and stuff like that. And that's going to change the world. What's the cool thing about 3D printer? Why it's exponential? One 3D printer can print about 80% of the parts of another 3D printer at the moment. Two makes four, four makes eight, you give it one to a village in Africa and soon you will have this exponential growth. So, you know, if you're here, this is where it's gonna take off soon. So, uh, a bit of tip for you guys. Um, so, let me share with you some Singularity projects that has um, uh, been spun off from Singularity University. We are part university, part think tank, and part accelerator. Uh, it's really competitive to get into the program. I was lucky enough to be the first Queenslander in the program back in 2011 when there were 2,200 applicants. Uh, now, and then the following year, they had 4,000. Um, and that's why we had to hold competitions around the world to ensure that an Australian person get into the program. And uh, my good friend Margie is here. She was one of the sponsors for the Australian competition. And I'll mention some of the projects that we have done. So this one is fellow robots, fellow robotics. So uh, Lowe's is like Bunnings in Australia. Essentially what happened is you have this robot, if you have a, if you, if you have a um, screw that you want to look for, you just go up to the robot, show it to it, it takes a snapshot, it speaks to you in 19 languages and it will take you to the right aisle. Not a difficult idea, but very efficient. Um, made in space, you know, it's a singularity company. It's the first 3D printer on a space station. Um, and it printed the first man-made product in space, a wrench. Um, because uh, astronauts didn't have a wrench, and you know how much uh, US Post charge for sending an uh, Australia Post for that matter, it might take a while to get there. Um, they 3D printed the whole wrench. Now this is a very significant, it's even bigger than, a, than Neil Armstrong stepping on the moon. 
It's the first product we have made in space, which means that we now can actually make bigger products, make bigger tools, and perhaps uh, leave this rock and explore space. And why? We want to explore space. You know, a lot of people argue about we should fix Earth first. Because you know that we're going to get hit by a meteorite. It's not a matter of if, it's when. So we should get off this rock, you know, and sooner the better, so that our species um, will basically survive. Uh, Mark McConville is a Gold Coast uh, resident. He has met him when I came back from Singularity University, took part in the competition, the first competition we had, and came runners up. He's trying to use comedy to prevent suicide and, and, uh, and increase, improve productivity. So he came to me and asked me to mentor him and um, you know, told me a story about how he was doing a gig on board a, on board a cruise ship and a lady came up to him in tears, thanking him profusely. I said, what did I do? He said, oh, my husband came up from Afghanistan, have not laughed or smiled for the last 18 months. After tonight, he's back to normal. So he hit him that maybe comedy can be used to, um, to uh, basically prevent suicide. Uh, he, he wanted to apply for a grant and being an academic, I said, well, you know, anecdotal evidence is not good enough. You need to write some papers and, you know. And he said, well, you know, I'm a boilermaker by training and a high school dropout. How am I going to do that? I said, you can go online and take some classes. And he did. He took a course from John Hawking University, had distinction in it, struggled. Uh, enroll, got him enrolled in Griffith University Center for Suicide Prevention. He, happy to tell you, he graduated uh, a year and a half ago and is finishing his master's right now in um, suicide prevention. Um, so this was a, a competition in Australia that uh, we had in 2014 that Margie helped sponsor. And um, Susan Graham, the winner, is an Australian, um, and she had an idea. How can you plant a billion trees using drones? You know that drones are already being used to um, shoot people and so on. So shooting a seed pod isn't hard, but it doesn't get tired. Uh, a human tree planter can plant maybe 126 trees a day. A drone never gets tired, so you can basically recharge, go out and replant, and um, basically this project is running now on trial in South Africa. Uh, it's a company that I actually invested in. I'm also a founding member of the Gold Coast Angels, a singularity company called Focus at Will, but I thought I'd show it to you guys because um, it might help you in your studies. If you listen to the music for at least 45 minutes, your productivity will go up to 400%. It puts your brain to a flow state. In seven out of 10 people, if you have ADHD or autism, you need perhaps a different track or different type of music. Modern Meadow is a company I mention a lot. Um, it's a singularity company. Uh, I tell my vegan friends, you don't have to convince me, all of us will be vegan in the near future. Um, they are 3D printing beef and leather from stem cells. So you never have to kill another animal for food because you'll be 3D printing it. So when I, uh, when I was back in Singularity 2011, they cooked a beef patty, cost them $10 million. Right. Fast forward to 2013, the price has dropped to 300,000 pounds in London. Today, it's down to less than 100, maybe even down to 11 or 10. So soon, you will have um, 3D printed uh, meat, which is as good as your normal, normal uh, meat, without the um, environmental impact. Uh, AI Poly was another singularity company. You can download the app. It allowed blind people to interact with the environment. So you point it at um, your ex Benedict, it will tell you what it is, um, you know, or tell you what the person is wearing in front of you. Um, uh, from an Australian girl, I think she was an Australian uh, Woman of the Year, uh, Marietta Chen. And um, I want to share with you, with you guys, the younger guys, you know, like what you should, um, um, what what you should be doing with your life if you still don't know what you want to do, right? What you want to do. You need to have a sense of purpose, which the Japanese call ikigai. So, first of all, you got to find out what you love to do, right? And then you basically need to have the skill set to support what you love to do. Um, then you make sure that people can actually pay you for it, and um, what the world needs. Okay, passion alone is not enough. Okay, because people always say follow your passion. So if you're a serial killer, uh, you shouldn't follow your passion, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, how do you find your passion? There are two ways, right, as um, Peter Demandis uh, has spoken about. One is think about when you were a kid. What do you like to do? Building stuff? If you still can't figure it out, imagine you're already a billionaire today. What would you do to change the world? That's what you should be doing now. At Singularity, our slogan is impacting a billion people positively within 10 years. We look at big projects because you're going to spend as much time doing a big project as you are doing a small one. How do you acquire skills? You can go to Udacity, you can go to you, you know, uh, Udemy, you can go to u traditional universities, or you can go work in a startup and learn skill sets. Because the days that you get a, a degree from a top university and get a job guarantee is over, right? Because people want to know what you can actually do. You do go to universities to be able to network with people, other like-minded people. So what the world needs? 
have a look at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, right? There are basically 17 goals here. And this is all the countries in the UN, 192 countries have agreed to support this for the next 15 years. So, you know, we have homeless people and, 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 uh, and you know, homeless people in empty homes. You have starving people and dumping food. You have um, healthcare system problems. You have, um, you know, some solution for traditional Chinese doctor and stuff like that. So essentially what, um, you know, there's plenty of problem for you to solve. So use some technology to do it. I'm out of time. So um, this is me trying out different things. That's uh, Tim Berners-Lee, the father of the World Wide Web. Look at my T-shirt. It says Chrome because he hates it because, um, you know, he, uh, he, he developed, you know, the uh, Mozilla, the, the browser. Um, try cooking, you know, not too bad at it with Matt Moran. Uh, Michio Kaku, the famous futurist, have a look at him. Uh, this is uh, Lee Chiu Sing, the last mile dancer. Now dancing is not for me, uh, ballet I mean. And Jack and Draka, um, and I just want to leave you guys with Jack and Draka, I always mention him. I met him again last year, he's now a freshman at Stanford. When he was 15 years old, he was so inspired to try to find a way to help detect pancreatic cancer because his father's best friend, his uncle, passed away within three months of diagnostics because it takes, uh, the, the technology has not moved for the last um, 30 years. He googled the answer and found a solution, won the Intel $75,000 prize, a solution I think that's um, 600 times faster and 120 times cheaper than anything out there. So if a 15-year-old kid can do this, I'm sure you guys can do wonders. Thank you very much.